Welcome to the news on Zodiac with me, Chan Simlozabanda. The headlines. President Chigwira says Makra board leadership needs to go. Meba closes two companies and fines three others over thin plastics. Treasury gives Admag authority to Bolo 95 billion kwacha for May's purchase. In sports, Judoka Harriet Bonfis makes history after becoming first Malawian athlete to qualify for the Olympic Games. We now give you the news in detail. President Lazarus Chagwira has warned public offices against wasteful spending of government resources. The president has also expressed disappointment with extravagance expenditure of resources by the Malawi Communications Regulator Authority Macra Board of Directors to spend about 50 million kwacha for a workshop in Dubai. Speaking on launching the Malawi National Fiber Backbone Project Phase 2 in Lirong on Friday, the president said the Macra Board leadership needs to go. Winston Kaimira reports. President Lazarus Chakwera has spoken on reports that the Board of Directors of the Malawi Communications Regulatory Authority Macra spent about 46 million iwaja for a training held in Dubai. The president described such spending as a waste of resources which he said his government does not tolerate. He said this calls for change of leadership of the board. The board chair of MACRA could not find a more cost-effective way of enhancing the capacity of board members than taking them to Dubai and blowing millions is a clear sign that the leadership MACRA board needs to change immediately. If you want quite Malawi. The place to do that is not in my administration. Mission is for servants, not masters. On the launch of the second phase of the Malawi National Fiber Backbone Project, President Chagwira said the project fits perfectly into development plans of the Tons Alliance government. He said the COVID-19 pandemic has compelled the world to go digital ways of working and Malawi should not remain behind. The president commended Huawei for taking part in providing ICT training to the youth. Huawei Managing Director for Malawi, Benjamin Zhang, commended government for its efforts in ensuring that the project is successful. This is Winston Kenira reporting for Zodiac in Ilongwe. Meanwhile, Minister of Information Gospel Gazako says improved internet connectivity shall assist the country to easily achieve development plans such as the Malawi 2063. The Malawi Environmental Protection Authority MEPA on Friday closed two plastic manufacturers and had in fines of about 11 million kwacha to three main plastic distributors in Lilongwe for non-compliance of the law against thin plastics. Of the two closed manufacturers, one Tsingdao manufacturer from China had eight of its machines confiscated for producing the banned plastics in January. Meanwhile, Acting Director General for the Authority, Taonga Mbali Luka, has waged war against all defaulters of the law, saying that the authority will clamp down on them. Innocent Kunchilwa has filed this report. A surprise inspection visit, at least to the plastic papers manufacturers and distributors. In today's surprise inspection, we found two manufacturers in Nilongwe, King Dao Plastics Limited and Ocean Industries, still producing the banned plastics. King Dao in January had eight of its machines confiscated and was also closed last year. The inspection team also visited three main distributors and handed fines of about 11 million kwacha. The team also visited major chain stores such as Chipiku, ShopRite, game stores where they found that they are partially complying with the law against the use of thin plastics. In all these stores, the inspection team found that the plastics that they're using meet the 60 micron size one side, but the other side falls short. But Acting Director General for the Malawi Environmental Protection Authority, Taonga Mbale Luka, says she will pick this up with the manufacturers. That issue, we will, we will invite the manufacturers uh, just to brief them on this and to ensure that when they are making the plastics, they, should, they ensure that they are consistent. Yeah, because you find that one side it's 60, another it's 58, a difference of two 
But you can see that the intention generally was for them to comply. They wanted to get to the 60 microns. So it's just a matter of engaging the manufacturers so that they stick to 60 microns. On. Malawi is one of the few countries in the Sadiq region taking a tough stance against thin plastics from the inspection today. The country has a long way to go in as far as enforcement is concerned. The Department of Disaster Management Affairs, DODMA, says a total of 67 people have died across the country between July 2020 to date due to disaster-related deaths. Spokesperson for the department, Shibiri Lokamula, told us on Friday that 49 of the deaths were due to lightning. We have a report by Blessings Kangombe. The Department of Disaster Management Affairs, the DODMA, says that since July 2020, the country has been experiencing several weather-related disasters. Spokesperson for the department, Ichibrio Kamola, says that the disasters, which include lightning, heavy rains and flash floods, claimed 67 lives and left several others injured. Sadly, we have lost 67 people, of which 49 died after being hit by lightning. We have also recorded a total of 276 injuries. In the 2020-2021 rainy season, over 37,000 households have been affected by the disasters. Mangochi, Lilongwenchi, Si, Zomba, Palombe, Balaga and Nkorogota are some of the districts affected by the disasters. The German government has launched a 250,000 euros COVID-19 vaccine sensitization drive. Deputy Head of Mission for the German Embassy, Dr. Sabine Lindemann, says the initiative is part of his social protection programs in the fight against the pandemic, especially now that the pandemic has been marred by false information. Secretary for Health, Dr. Charles Mansambo, has since acknowledged the move will help government's efforts in the administration of COVID-19 vaccine. I did not film numbers filed this report. Under the social protection program, the German government aims to ensure that the people in Malawi have the right information about COVID-19 vaccines. Speaking during the launch of the campaign in Ilong on Friday, David, a head of mission for the German embassy, Dr. Sabine Linnemann, said the decision was made having noted concerns about vaccine hesitancy across the country. She says... This was standing in the way of eradicating the pandemic speedily. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people in Malawi who don't uh, took the vaccine. So now uh, this, this uh, sensitization uh, program with the bus which we have behind here on, uh, on the compound will help to um, meet people in the different districts, in 12 districts of, of uh, whole Malawi and to explain why it is important to have uh, the vaccine. So this will be done in schools, in vaccination centers, and uh, this will be in a kind of uh, very welcome uh, situation, and people can ask questions so that they uh, will better understand why it is so important to get the vaccine. Principal Secretary for Health, Dr. Charles Monsambo, held a gesture by the German government saying it will bridge gaps of misinformation relating to the COVID-19 jab. As you are aware, there's quite a lot of misinformation there about the uh, COVID-19, the vaccination and various other issues around COVID-19. And we need to give people the right message. And uh, it's good that uh, this campaign is uh, getting the right message to the people. And we can't on you, the media, to support us uh, in that uh, drive to get the correct message. The German government has pumped in 250,000 euros towards the campaign, which is targeting 11 districts. Nkata Bay District Council officials have expressed concern with increasing cases of gender-based violence and area child marriages being reported in the district. Meanwhile, gender officer for the council, Wison Bonongwe, has said that the rise could partly be attributed to improved reporting of the cases by members of the community. Tawera Kumwenda has more. Gender officer from Karabe District Council, Wison Bonongwe, says the council is not shaken with the rise in cases of gender-based violence and child marriages being reported in the district, as this shows that people are now coming forward to seek help. Bonongwe says with continued awareness, the numbers will continue to rise, which in turn will put an end to the issues. People are now well educated. There are good referral systems on the ground. People know where to report issues. Now because of that, we are now registering uh, an increase in numbers. It means in the past they were there, 
but then they weren't being reported. We're not necessarily just registering them. We are also dealing with them. We are able to respond to them. Speaking when the Anglican Council in Malawi donated sewing machines to gender-based violence survivors in Karabay, program coordinator for the Spotlight Initiative project under the council, Faith Chimwaza, says there has been a tremendous change in approach in dealing with issues of gender-based violence in the country. Chimwaza has since asked for coordination between government and stakeholders if child marriages and gender-based violence-related issues are to be dealt with. I can't say that people are not aware about the GBV, but they are aware, only that it needs just to be emphasized. But regardless of what, we know the survivors. These are the people who have faced those things like the crimes. They have faced some dangers. So putting them together and training them, that telling them that they can do something, that only encourages them. Speaking on behalf of the survivors, Tradition Authority Mankambila of Nkada Bay says most women have left their abusive marriages and expressed optimism that the machines will help them become economically independent as they will venture into business. For Zodiac in Zuzu, I'm Doera Kumwenda. The Malawi Defense Force says its troops are ready to serve the interest of the Sadiq region when called to defuse tensions in the Cabo Delgado province in Mozambique. The MDF's commitment comes barely a day after President Lazala Sekwera said Malawi will be among countries to deploy forces to support the Mozambican army in the fight against an Islamist insurgency. Deputy Commander Lieutenant General Paul Valentino Piri has told us on Friday that the MDF is waiting for official communication from authorities on the mission. Some Banda reports. Speaking on the sidelines of a graduation ceremony for 53 paratroopers from Malawi and Zambia in Salima on Friday, Lieutenant General Paul Piri said the Malawi Defense Force is closely monitoring the situation in Cabo Delgado and awaits guidance from authorities on the next move. On arrival from a SADC meeting in Mozambique on Thursday, President Lazarus Chakwera announced that he had made a commitment for Malawi to deploy forces in northern Mozambique where Islamist insurgents have killed hundreds of people and displaced hundreds of thousands of others since 2017. Lieutenant General Piri said, as is the case in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the MDF has forces, another contingent of the forces will be deployed in Cabo Delgado. Our defense forces are ready at any time that it is going to be called to actually undertake any, any, any task. So what we are trying to do here, or what we have done, is basically just to continue our normal training and if we are real court to actually deploy anywhere outside Malawi or even within Malawi we can be able to do that and uh, through this program maybe we are simply improving our status of uh, uh, right. Meanwhile, of the 53 graduating paratroopers, 31 are from Zambia. The training at Parachute Battalion started on the 23rd of May. One of the senior officers from the Zambian Army is Brigadier General Boston Silas Simbuliani. As the Zambia Defense Forces, we have uh, benefited a great deal in the sense that uh, our operational capability will be, uh, have been enhanced. And also, this has given us an opportunity. Uh, as you are aware that Zambia is not an island, in the, in the current dispensation, we need the, that inter interoperability between, special, uh, between the defense forces. So it gives us that opportunity to train and to see uh, what other defense forces can offer us. A SADC assessment technical team recommended the deployment of a strong force to help Mozambique in the fight against the insurgents. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this. Malawi 2063 Kusinda 
If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. This marriage is a punishment for you, and you are going to be suffering for the rest of your life. I thought you'd married some supermodel. Narero, Narero, Narero. TV, Mosa Vuta. Just dial star 24 7 hash to pay your Go TV or DSTV subscription. Narero, Narero. Standard Bank, it can be. <laughs> Ramainiti at TNM Kuyambida 200 Kwacha Kavana Kuposila Pamenepo Muta Ukala Moti Mama Millionaire Muti TNM Tikolore Promotion Kuma Muka Unjezi Rama Units Ni 100 Kwacha Kavana Kuposila Apo Muta Ndia Ma Bonus Oimbida Foni SMS Kavana Data Pompo Pompo TNM Always With You Welcome back. Here are the top stories again. President Chakwera says Makra board leadership needs to go. Meba closes two companies and fined three others over thin plastics. Treasury gives Admark authority to borrow 95 billion kwacha for maize purchase. And in sports, Judoka Harit Bonface makes history after becoming first Malawian athlete to qualify for the Olympic Games. Now, moving on with the news, Finance Minister Felix Munusu disclosed that his ministry has authorized the state grain marketer, Agriculture Development and Marketing Corporation, ADMAC, to borrow 95 billion kwacha for purchasing maize and other produce from farmers this year. Munusu was speaking after members of parliament passed an appropriation bill that mandates him to raise and spend the 2021-2022 national budget pegged at 1.995 trillion kwacha. Andrew Viano was at Parliament as had filed this report. Minister of Finance Felix Mlusu has been mandated to raise and spend money in the national budget up to March 31st, 2022. This follows the passing of the appropriation bill by legislators Friday afternoon, which gives the Treasury power over the financial plan, which was initially proposed at 1.990 trillion kwacha but was slightly adjusted upwards by 5.5 billion kwacha to 1.995 trillion kwacha. But before the bill was passed, Mangoji Southwest legislator Shadrach Namalomba quizzed Mlusu on how Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation ADMAC will be financed and access 95 billion kwacha that is required to purchase produce from farmers amid reports of bumper harvest. In his response, Mulusu said his ministry has already authorized ADMAC to outsource from lending institutions and purchase producers. I did explain uh, this uh, finance or funding is going to be you know, off the budget. So it is not in the budget. Uh, so ADMAC is the one which is going to access uh, the funding from the financial market and wherever uh, support from government will be required government is going to provide that support. ADMAC has already secured that 95 billion, um, so they are now ready to continue you know, buying the produce by offering uh, very good prices for our farmers. The 2021-2022 national budget has seen education getting the lion's share of the financial appropriation plan at 436 billion kwacha, while agriculture, which is the backbone of Malawi's economy, has been given 284 billion kwacha. The financial plan is expected to run between July 2021 and March 2022.
In business news, Export Development Fund has partnered with Standard Bank Malawi to help rectify trade anomalies that have stagnated Malawi's export graph. Managing Director for Export Development Fund, Gerard Msumba, concedes that capacity gaps which could best be addressed through partnerships are failing many Malawian entrepreneurs to develop bankable business plans to accelerate the country's exports. It is anticipated that doubts will be minimized on traders seeking financial support from Standard Bank to boost the country's economy through guarantees from Export Development Fund. We have this report. Malawi's turnaround from a predominantly importing economy to a net exporter, it is believed, hinges on viable partnerships that will help unlock sources of capital for local producers and manufacturers. It was on this premise that Export Development Fund and Standard Bank have signed a memorandum of understanding to support local traders to produce for export markets. Currently, EDF Managing Director Mr. Gerard Msomba says, Local traders fail to make breakthroughs because of capacity gaps that in the end prevents potential financiers like Standard Bank from committing to support. The collaboration is trying to address the risks that banks cannot deal with on their own and EDF is coming in with instruments to de-risk them so that they can equally allocate capital to priority growth sectors of the economy without any worry on their commercial returns of the uh, returns that their shareholders are demanding. And considering that the country's exports are agro-based, Chief Executive Officer for Standard Bank of Malawi, Mr. Philip Madinga, says focus in the new partnership will lean on supporting sectors that have been earmarked as boosters in realizing the country's development agenda, Malawi 2063. Such sectors, Mr. Madinga says, include mining, tourism and agriculture. We believe that by supporting agriculture, uh, providing both short-term financing and long-term financing as well and the trade instruments, we can actually begin to support the export diversification that this country uh, is actually implementing. But at the same time also support the import substitution. The new partnership is coming at a time the Africa continental free trade area has been operationalized, hence boosting chances of local producers and manufacturers to tap into export markets being created under the new trade arrangement. Priyantambala, ZBS News, Lirongwe. Let's now move on to sports news. Judoka Harriet Bonface has made history after becoming the first Palawan athlete to qualify for the Olympics, which will take place next month in Japan. Judo Association of Malawi has confirmed the development, adding despite missing a number of qualifying campaigns, she has made the cut through the tripartite allocation. Bright Kayama has filed this report. Judoka Harriet Bonface will compete at the forthcoming 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, having reached the minimum requirements for one to qualify. Bonface, who missed most of the 2020-21 qualification campaigns, has made it through on tripartite allocation. There are three ways of reaching at the final stage of the Olympics, that is, through direct, continental quota, and tripartite allocation. Judo Association of Malawi General Secretary Osborne Banda said Boniface has proved that Malawi can produce top performers at international level. The qualification system this year has been very difficult. It's a great achievement. It's good news. It's not easy as we thought we might thought. Speaking to Zodiac on Friday, Boniface said she was excited having achieved one of her long-time dreams, that is to play at Olympic Games. I'm very excited and I can't control my joy <laughs> because at first I lost hope when I saw that my name was not on the qualification list for direct qualification and continental quarter qualification. But now that I have qualified through Shabada, I'm very happy that I'm going to Tokyo and I'm really excited. Before Harriet's qualification was confirmed, Malawi was yet to send an athlete to compete at Olympics on qualification, but rather participates on solidarity. Meanwhile, two more athletes are set to follow suit with Archer Alineo David and runner Asmenye Sumaka also close to securing a spot at the delayed 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games slated to start on 23rd July to August 2021 in Japan. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama.
That's about what we had time for in this news edition, but before we go, a look at the headlines. President Chakwera says Makra board leadership needs to go. MEPA closes two companies and fines three others over thin plastics. Treasury gives Sadmark authority to borrow 95 billion kwacha for maize purchase. And in sports, judoka Harry Bonface makes history after becoming first Malawian athlete to qualify for the Olympic Games. Visit our website zodiacmalawi.com for more news. My name is Chansi Mlozabanda. Thanks for watching and enjoy your weekend. Thank you.